everybody. I'm Selena Pompiani, and this is another episode of From the Top, presented by Armina Stone. And I have Simon Arias with me today. I am so excited, Simon. Me too. I don't Honor. even. I don't even need to introduce you because you are everywhere. I know people know you. If you don't know Simon, you will now. So he is the owner of Arius Agencies. He has a fabulous podcast called The Grindcast. We will get into more details about The Grindcast later. He's a philanthropist, a motivational speaker, and he has such an inspiring story. I can't wait for you to share your story with everybody, Simon. I look forward to it. Yeah, so tell me all about you, your business, the person you are today, because you have such an inspirational background story, and you motivate so many people, so I can't wait for our listeners to hear this. Oh, man, I really don't like talking about myself much. I think there's more value in in just trying to get the whatever knowledge or wisdom that I have, so I'm going to blow through... I'll blow through that as fast as I no. can, like Reader's Digest version, you know, uh, I'm but from I Youngstown, love, Ohio. I love it. You're repping it today. Yes. Youngstown, Ohio. Youngstown invented grit. And uh, my mom showed me grit. She had me at 19 years old, uh, single mom, and I grew up on the east side of Youngstown. She sold the house my uh, going into my freshman year of high school for $11,000 and uh, bought our first like house. That was a hand-me-down from my great-grandmother who passed away. And uh, my mom bought our our home for $32,000. It was one bedroom, one bathroom. I lived in the attic. Um, And this ain't like I'm sad about it or sob story. There's so many people that have it way worse. It's not like, you know, poor me. Just This is just the real story. You know, it explains a lot about why I'm so close with my mother and and uh, I'm a mama's boy and, and, and all of that stuff. You know, I just was with Emory and I had the chance to, I'd do a trip with my mom once a year. Oh, I love it. You Where'd know, you this go? Is, this is five years. We went to Sarasota. It was an accident. And then I'm like, I see what God had in store because my friends were just spoiling me rotten. I got the best Uber ever. <laughs> I had I had uh, Emery showed up in the black and yellow Lamborghini. People you know, thought I was so important. I saw this on Instagram. That's oh, right. Oh man, I had a blend, and Bobby gave me his boat, and, <laughs> and I'm like, man, they probably thought I planned this. You know, I just it just happened that way. But you know, I had have good friends. But my mom, you know, single mom had us. You know, early and and uh, when I went to high school, bought the house mm-hmm. for thirty two thousand dollars, and and uh, I'm living like a double life. You know, I'm, right. I'm playing sports and, and I got a great grandmother on player. me. I don't know about great, but I was good. Oh no. I saw highlights. You were great. I was good. So we won a state <laughs> championship and, and uh, I was a captain. I uh, went to college, played football at Mercyhurst uh, University, uh, Division II football program in Erie. Mm-hmm. Uh, started four years there at safety. Got in some trouble in high school a little bit. I was uh, spent some time in juvenile mm-hmm. uh, myself. My house was shot up. You know, when when I was a kid, and it's not like they're just picked a random house. Right. You know, I was doing things that I, you know, I look back on, and I'm like, man, I don't even know how I'm how I'm here. And that's how the whole thing started with inspiring minds of of you know, once I had the opportunity to take care of myself and and, and know that it was going to be something long term that would sustain in my life. You know, when I started out in business and and had some success, I just had an overwhelming feeling of like I got to go home and do something for these kids that I know exactly what they're going through and I know I can relate, you know, to them and, and if we right. could just save one person. So that was like over seven years ago, we did the Inspiring Minds thing and uh, been in the insurance industry for uh, 16 years. Started right out of college, it was my first job. Started out in sales. Uh, now we're in Pittsburgh, got 24 offices, uh, 14 different states. Wow. And, uh, I'm happily married and um, been with my wife, you know, going on seven years, married now. Uh, we've been together over a decade. Thank you. And you have uh, beautiful children. Three. Yeah, three kids. Got a, a five-year-old daughter, three-year-old boy, four-month-old boy, and uh, my 18-year-old uh, adopted daughter, uh, Amaya, who graduates high school uh, this year. And uh, mm-hmm. so she she came with us in eighth grade. Her dad was my best friend growing up. Uh, he was murdered my freshman year of uh, of college. And so I had the opportunity to have a piece of him 
you know, by having her, wow. you know, with me and, and she's really doing well. Special. So that's, that's me in a nutshell. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, you're amazing. You really are. I mean, the fact that you had a really tough upbringing, but you still had such a strong support system with your family and your mom. I mean, I'm sure having that in your life is really what helped you get through everything. And even sports, my dad always talks about how sports really shape you. They change your lives. You learn these lessons playing sports Big growing time. up and you carry them throughout your whole life. Big time. And I, football, I'm sure you remember things still to this day. No doubt. Wow. Yeah, I, I think the biggest lesson I got from playing football, you know, as, as you can see, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not physically gifted with size. You know, I'm vertically challenged, as they say. So I was, you know, I was five foot seven, 180 pounds, you know, playing college football and playing, you know, against people, you know, six three, six four, beating people out to get on the field that were six two, six three, you know, D one transfers, and it and it happened through not being blessed with a certain special athletic gift. It was like, all right, we're gonna outgrind these people. Like the only option I have is is I'm gonna come earlier. I'm gonna stay later. I'm gonna go harder. I'm gonna dive. I'm gonna bleed. I'm gonna mm -hmm. do whatever it requires to get a boost because I can't change the size, but I can change the grit. Oh, of it. I and love when, that. And when I got out of college, you know, I went to high school that way. People thought I wouldn't play there. Went to college. Nobody thought that I would play there. And then I come out and get into business and I realized that it was all for my advantage, that all the challenges of being a small athlete was what you need in business in order to make it. Like mm -hmm. it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's before you see all the, you know, it's like the, the show is from the top. So sometimes people see you right now and they see, right. you know, whatever looks great, and, you know, even in your life, you know, it's like, oh, she just must have always had it that way, just, you know, from the top. But mm -hmm. you really, no matter where you come from, you start from the bottom, you know, in order to get to the top. And that's yeah. the stuff that nobody ends up seeing. And it's all that grittiness in the middle of, you know, not quitting and outworking people, the stuff that's not sexy. Yeah. You know, that's the stuff that really it requires the win. I love it. One of my favorite sayings has always been when when talent, hard work beats talent, when talent doesn't work hard. Yep. I think that is such a great life motto. It's so true. And it's true to you, too. Look at you. It's amazing. Yep. So after I want to go back to after your career, your football career, college, you graduated from college before you started your own thing. And, you, you know, you went off on your own with Arias agencies. W where did you first begin again? Cleveland. I'm, and you quickly rose to the top with these companies. Yep. Yeah. With, within my first year, I went from, you know, sales, killing it in sales to running my own office in Columbus. And I opened it, you know, from scratch with me and three other people, you know, within a one year span. So 12 months, everything happened really quickly. Um, but I was working seven days a week, you know, every single day, you know, that, you know, hear people talk about balance, you know, like I had no balance. It was all out of balance. And I think I was, I was lucky, you know, because I don't know if I would be able to do that today, you know, with, with, with my family and the other mm -hmm. things that I got going on, but it yeah, was the perfect storm of being like, time to work I ain't hard. missing nothing. I don't have any kids. I don't have a wife or, right. you know, nothing like that. What else am I going to do but get myself in trouble and spend the money? I'm going to mm -hmm. just I'm going to just go to work. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's so, smart yep, at a young age. Paid off. It's so smart. Well, I want to go back to you mentioned briefly in the beginning, inspiring minds. I want to talk about that wonderful organization and and your role in it, how you started it, because you are about giving back to others. Yeah. So tell me more about inspiring minds. So you know when that transition happened of like, all right, I feel like. I hate to say I made it, you know, but it's like, you I feel did. like I'm well enough to where I can, I owe it to somebody else and I can, and I can handle it. You know, it's not going to affect my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I, I have to start giving even more. And uh, so I said, all right, the first place I'm going to start is in my hometown area. And I started looking for, you know, kids in the demographic that just, you know, maybe in that poverty area or, you know, not making a lot of money, you know, single parent, you know, that whole market and, and I saw somebody in the town over from me, Warren, Ohio, that I played football against and he had a successful youth program. And so I went there and visited it and started to contribute to it financially and uh, fell in love with it on accident. So it was like, you know, when you fall in love, it's almost like, you know, sometimes it happens when you least expect it. You know, all of a sudden I'm like 
all in building this youth program, like driving back to Youngstown four or five days a week with a pregnant wife, running fundraisers, you know, my wife up till one o'clock in the morning with her belly out, <laughs> eight months pregnant, you know what I mean? Just helping to do things for, for a fundraiser to, to, to build this thing. And we were like all in, you know, from, yeah. from that point. So then, you know, Youngstown's been around now for uh, about seven years. And, you know, then I told myself, all right, you know, I've been in Pittsburgh now for 13 years mm -hmm. and it's, it's been a, it's been a second home to me, you know, truthfully. I mean, the people, uh, my, my friends, the people that, that I'm surrounded by, my wife, my children, the business that, you know, the, the business success I've been able to have was all because of Pittsburgh and people from Pittsburgh. So I got this loyalty now that I had to Youngstown. I got that same love, you know, for, for Pittsburgh. So I start getting that same feeling of like, all right, what did you do here, buddy? You, like, it's good you took care of them, but now you're here. What have you done for Pittsburgh people? Right. You know, so it's like, all right, we need to bring this thing to, to, to Pittsburgh. And I got blessed with a, a board and a team of people that are genuinely on that mission with no other reason or agenda for doing it other than to help people that all get along and love each other and are willing to do the freaking work. Um, there's a lot of times you can get on a board and, and, and there's like, and not do anything, you know, one right. person, you know, running for 300 yards a game and playing defense and, and doing everything. Mm -hmm. But when you get on a, a team like this, there's our, our board is just really, really special people. And I value it more because I've seen other things now. If this was my first experience, I wouldn't realize how good we really have it. But man, to have people that really genuinely care, they're passionate, they're they're giving of their time, they're giving of their of their money, they all have influence and they're they're like hands on. The board is like going hands on in the trenches, you know, with, with the kids. I love it. You know, all of that stuff. And, and Emre, uh, he is on the board. Emery is. He's the vice president he's the vice of the board. But we really just listen to he's whatever Emery tells us to do. He's actually sitting over here right now. We should tell him to come on. He'll, yeah. come, he'll come back on. We'll get him next time. But yeah, he. I know he's a huge part I of met, your board. I met Emery through his heart. You know that that I had a golf outing in uh, Youngstown fundraiser, and one of my friends, Josh uh, Adamick. Yeah. He uh, shout out we to love Josh. Josh. Hey, and, Josh. Uh, Avid real estate, <laughs> and and so he he was coming out there and he said he was going to support me and all of a sudden he comes in and, and he got Emery and he got Bobby and they all you know they all showed up and and uh brought you know brought their uh, brought a couple nice cars brought some resources <laughs> and I'm like man I, I have people that I grew up with in my own hometown that for whatever reason didn't find a way to come support and I knew that they could and uh, I wasn't bitter about it, but it just made me value people coming from a whole nother city and a whole nother state that didn't even owe nothing to me to show that type of love and loyalty because that's the way that I try to roll. You know, I'm a, I'm a loyal person to the bone, you know, that if I'm with you, like, if we got to go without 24, you know, if we got to go without sleep for, for a day, whatever, yeah. you need me there tomorrow, like, I'm there. You that's know what I mean? Such a whatever. Great quality. Loyalty. Mm -hmm. So it really when I see is. that coming back, I'm like, wow, I know we got something special. Those people end up being the people that we start the board with here in, in the whole program with in Pittsburgh. I love it. That's the great thing about Pittsburgh, too. I think we're a really special city and a special town because even you, you are not from here, but you have grown to, it's almost I'm sure it feels like your hometown now. You've been here for so many years, and it's a tight-knit community. There's good people in Pittsburgh, and you see it firsthand. It's a bigger Youngstown. It is, yeah, old, it is. There's still old-school values here, and that's why I say I got lucky because when I built the business, Arius Agencies, we're all over the place now. We're even working on getting into another country right wow. now. And the business was born with, with Pittsburgh people. And when you look at like, all right, their grandparents, their parents, they're all like come from this blue collar background. If you look a couple levels up of like their people that how they got to Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and their, their grandparents, they got them old school values and, and loyalty and, and very similar to, to Youngstown. So it was like a, a natural fit, you know, for me a big sports town. You know, oh, I, I love that absolutely. about about the area. Even though I am, I I, I was just a Cleveland say. Browns fan. <laughs> I am a Cleveland Browns I, fan because that. of the loyalty. Uh, 
It's a weird relationship. You know, and my I'll, wife I'll is a Steelers fan. I'll accept that. You have half and half. How about the kids? What are the kids? They're they're uh, they're uh, they're split. They're split. They're split. And uh. yeah, my wife doesn't. She's she's not admit. She's like she's <laughs> she's not admitting it. You know, she's watching it happen right before her eyes. Every once in a while, my daughter will root. You know what I mean with me, and. Uh, <laughs> But we'll see. That's going to be interesting. We'll I got a feeling I'm going to lose, I'm gonna lose that battle. Yeah, you are. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of your beautiful family, I love your entire family. Your wife is fantastic. Your kids are gorgeous. They look just like the two of you. Beautiful family. I absolutely love Sienna. Your daughter, Sienna, she is a star on Instagram, and we should have brought her here today. We're going to bring her back here. She, I mean, tell me about her. She's amazing. She's a little ball of energy. She has she likes a ton to of entertain. followers. She likes to entertain. She does like flips and cartwheels and no-handed this and <laughs> back springs all she through has the such house. She's a great on-camera presence. I mean, at a young age, how old she's is she? She she's uh she's 5. So she started I feel like that came from those pageants. She started oh, yeah. doing the pageants and she's, you know, made it to nationals last year she was top five in the nation for i can't wait until she's miss universe me too wow me too at I first i was like anti though i was anti you, you were. know i'm like man what are we doing spending all this time you know she's going on this stage like i don't want her to think her beauty <laughs> has to be in you know presenting herself on stage in order to, to find value in herself i mean i had all these concerns about this and as i went through it for a couple of years and i watched her confidence to like walk in front of a thousand oh. people. You know, we did a, a show, a fashion show in New York City during Fashion Week. It was like, I had to break into place. I had to sneak into place. There was like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm the dad. Like, yeah, right. This ain't going down. I went through the basement and, and uh, if anybody's listening from there, it's too late now. <laughs> I slid in the back dough and, and, and I had to. It was, it was, it was sold out. I mean, it was wow. like huge. And I, and I got to watch, and I, I, I sat, I snuck second row. <laughs> and and I got to watch her. I'm like all the VIP people and stuff, just it. faking it till you make it. That's hoping, all you gotta praying do. Praying that nobody <laughs> catches me, you know. And and uh, and she comes walking out in front of all these people and, and lights going and all this stuff. And I'm like, this is really amazing. Like I would have myself would have been nervous. And so now I'm watching. What I do like about it is is the sense of confidence that, exactly. that it's built in yeah. her and in in the ability to communicate, mm -hmm. you know, with with people. Even I I always look at these pageants. I just watched Miss Universe. I love it. A lot of my friends have competed, and I think it's so great at a young age that she's involved with it because you even they teach you how to become a good communicator, a good speaker on stage. I mean, what you learn in pageants it could carry you into so many different directions. It's amazing, and I already see that in her so i had to bring her up you got to follow her instagram she's insta yeah, princess famous princess sienna capri i love it <laughs> princess sienna capri go follow her on instagram wow i'm so happy to have you on our podcast but i want to know all about your podcast because you've been doing it for a long time the grind cast tell me about the grind yeah the grind cast so um you know it's just we we, we either are giving business tips and advice motivation or we're interviewing people that we know will add value to people either people that have had extreme success in business uh extreme success in in uh, mixed martial arts professionals because it's all the same mindset you know in order to make it to that level it's the same type of stuff it requires to make it at any level to to do anything great so we just try to expose any contacts and connections that we have from professional athletes you know to to business owners and, and stuff like that. Anybody that's making an impact that can add value, you know, to other people, that's the grind cast. And then I got my longtime uh, friends that grew up with me in charge of it all. So I got, you know, my friend Giovanni, we grew up together. Uh, He's the best. Forever. He's back here now doing his thing. It's what's amazing funny, how he does all this. What's funny, Selena, is uh, it's not a shock that he's doing this. <laughs> well, even he's he live edits this whole thing. Like, it's, I don't he's know how he does it. He's been doing this since we were young kids. Like, he he's was the only it. one. None of us knew anything about computers. We used to tease him, like, behind a computer. And then he would put things together. Like, he would make a studio for people to rap. Oh, my um, gosh. In, in, out of a closet in an apartment building with like limited resources and it would come out great. Wow. 
Like wow. he was always able to rig stuff. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like when you hear stories of people doing stuff with like hangers and tinfoil and That's it's like him. he would just figure it out. You know what I mean? He was like way too smart, you know, for me. And so to have him behind the scenes doing everything to watch it all come for full circle is uh, is cool and funny at the same time. And then I got Big Perm, you know. <laughs> He's always on the grind cast. We he's the co-host now. Here. He's the he's the Come co. Come say hi to everybody. He's the, he's he's the co-host no. in and uh, <laughs> on on the grind cast. And we also grew up together. He was the first one to drive oh. out of all of us. Uh, we would all pitch in like a dollar, you know, and and have him take us places to the mall when it was like you know four or five dollars would get us around, you know, for the whole day. So to have him with me to enjoy the fruits of the labor and, and the, to know the love and know the loyalty and be able to complete each other's sentences and stuff like that. You know, I was an only child, so I didn't grow up with brothers or sisters. You know what I mean? So when I take yeah, to people, it's like, those are like my brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? So exactly. I even looking at Emery and Andrea, like that's what we call each other, brother and yeah. sister. Like that's, that's how we roll. And uh, so, yeah, I got big perm on the grind cast. Oh, too. I love it. And we keep looking at everybody because we do have a live audience. We got everybody back here. It's kind of cool. I like it. We usually don't have many people like in here. I like it, too. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> well, I got the chance to visit your studio a couple months ago. It's amazing. It really is. You have such a cool setup. Yeah, I like it. Jamani put it all together. Oh, and that's what we were joking. Like w- when he came back here, there's so much equipment and so much that needs to be connected and plugged in and how he knew how to do it. I mean, it's a gift. I would have no clue. Yep. If Emory told 20. me to run the podcast, well, we wouldn't have one. <laughs> if you I got was like back. 30 years experience back there. <laughs> believe me, believe me. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm the same exact way for sure. <laughs> Well, Simon, you, I love talking to you. I could talk to you all day. I really could. Back at you. But you, I mean, you're so inspirational. You have such a great success story and you worked so hard to get where you are today. What would you say would be, you know, the keys to life in I, everything, in your career, family, character? Yeah, I think, um, I think working on yourself uh first you know the answers to everything usually people think are are out there you know somewhere like why can't I fix these people why can't I fix this person you know why can't I fix my wife why can't I fix my husband why can't I fix these people and if if we just focus on fixing ourselves, you know then 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 the things that you look at and the way that you look at them change and you start to attract the right things into your life you know I don't want to get too crazy but you know that whole law of attraction thing you know whatever you start thinking about whatever energy that you start giving out starts coming back your way and so you know you got to learn to 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 not even pay attention to the negative energy because the negative energy is going to come when you're doing anything positive you when you're when you're really pushing when you're really going forward the cliche saying of having haters it's a real thing so anybody that's ever been at the top or climbed anything knows that there's a certain level of hate that comes you know with it and i think that discourages people sometimes on their climb because you know people are taking shots at them and and you got to you know I, I had somebody tell me one time imagine lebron james imagine kobe bryant imagine these professional athletes you don't think they go to away games and have people booing them in the stands and talking oh, about yeah. their mother and they can't let it get in their head or go mm-hmm. running up into the you know the, the stands trying to fight with the fans and you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like be a professional and and it, you, you got to expect for those things to come and you got to be mm. able to do your job anyways and stay and stay positive you know so i think it's hard to build a positive life with a negative mindset so being positive which which how do you do that you you hang around positive people you can't hang around people that aren't going in the direction of no. of of where you're going and i think sometimes that's one of the you don't get to go up without giving up something you know the the you have to sacrifice and I, i've taught my daughter I have sacrifice tattooed on the back of my arm and we were in Marco Island, you know, this past week and she's asking me what everything is. And so we get into sacrifice and I said, honey, I I want you to explain. I want to explain to you what sacrifice is. It's it's really more of an investment short term to get something better long term. Let me explain that you give up something that you that you kind of want for something bigger and better you know, down the road that you'll come, come back to you. So if, if you give me one piece of your candy and I give you a whole box of candy back, that would be a temporary sacrifice in order to get something, something bigger. 
And so I think in order to go up, you always got to give up something. And, and part of the giving up is you got to give up people that are negative for your life, whether it's a, a, a boyfriend, family, family members, right. you know, friends, people that, that you have this loyalty with, you almost have to be careful in order to even help anybody else or to help them. Sometimes you just have to give that up and you have to go, you know, cut that out in, in, in order to go to the next level. And I think just staying grateful. Um, That's a huge it, thing every day. It's hard to be depressed and, uh, and, and grateful at the same time. You know, you, it's perspective of, is it really that bad? Or what are all the blessings I have in my life in order to encourage you to keep going? Because in order to do something great, you're going to have to go through major, you're going to have to go through obstacles and adversity. And the adversity is exactly what you need in order to make you who it is that you're supposed to be in this world. If you're supposed to do something big. And I think too many times people quit in the middle of that journey. You know, I, I've never seen anybody quit their way to the top. So if you want to get to the top, one of the things that's required is you can't quit. And the reason why you can't quit is because you're going to want to quit. That's how you separate yourself from other people of like, can I just hang on through this moment? And when you're going through these tough times and these tough moments, whether it's a relationship or, or a business, people start to look at the season that they're in in their life and judge like this is going to be the next 10 years. You're just in a bad season. You know what I mean? There's summer, but there's also right. winter here in Pittsburgh. And it's not like we think we're stuck for 12 months, you know, with, with snow. <laughs> it's like, no, this is winter. Yeah. Summer's coming. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, 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 and climate change is like, looks like a real thing. So we start getting a little bit longer summer into, into like December. So we know when we go through some crappy weather that it's not going to be forever. Mm -mm. And so I think people need to understand, you know, whether you look at somebody that built a successful marriage long term or somebody that built a successful business long term, the two things those people and things have in common is they could tell you about tough times and the difference between them winning and losing was they just didn't give up. They just they found a way to get through that moment, through that season. And so I think that's a requirement that people need to have in order to be successful is you've got to be encouraged through those tough times that it's not going to last. It's that whole, yeah. you know, tough times don't last, tough people do. Yeah, You know, that's, that's the it. stuff. Oh, everything. I just, I can't wait to rewatch this back and just listen to you again because you really I mean what a great motivational speaker you are even I'm I'm listening to some of your tips and I'm like when I'm feeling down or having you know not such a positive day that's all you need to do really and, and wake up and be grateful I'm, I'm honored to be on here with you I, I, I remember when it was all a dream just <laughs> I remember when Emery was telling me how bad he would just wanted you to be able to be the me the, too. the person whatever that per like the, the face of the deal you know I'm it driving down the work. street I'm we like there she here. is up there. there oh there she is over there she's everywhere you my friend are everywhere <laughs> seeing your face everywhere this which was, is which is which is a great oh, thing because you're beautiful you. inside and out thank but I remember so how much. excited he was about everything and, and hoping, you know, and all, Me and then too. to watch it, watch it come to fruition is, is, uh, is super Aww. cool. It's been really cool. It was in the works for a while and we finally made it happen. So it's great. It was so great to have you on here. You're Glad amazing. Here. The grind cast, make sure to tune in if you don't already. And Simon, before you go, we are going to just sing a little bit. Do you sing? We're going to sing. Yeah. And I'll do whatever Emery oh, tells me to do. All right. All we're going to do. I'm not a big singer. <laughs> me, I'm, I'm not either. I'm a, I'm a terrible okay, singer. So every it. person that comes in here, they carry me. So we're just going to do the jingle. Ooh, our meanest. Oh, I'll see you right. I'll I'm ready. I'll, we got our practice and ready. let's do I it, I like Simon. the ooh in the beginning. Me it too. We'll off. do a nice My daughter ooh. got it down too. Oh, we're going to have her on next do time. It. Okay, Simon. Three, two, one. Ooh, ooh our, our meanest. stone. stone. Simon Arias, you are the best. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. <laughs>